Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 16 of season 3 of the F124 driver career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here at the most important race of the year as a Ferrari driver. We're back at the Temple of Speed here at Monza ready for the Italian Grand Prix. Yes, this is the one that every Ferrari driver dreams of winning. The Tafosi out in full force and we could have won the other race in Italy this year uh, had the engine not gone bang on just lap 7 back in Imola. So I'm hoping we can rewrite the wrongs from that weekend and walk away as a winner in red. Of course, if you missed out on the video that went live yesterday from Zanfort, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out as well. Of course, it was quite an interesting one. Uh, and to the surprise of maybe not many, Max Verstappen returned in fighting form to take the win at the venue. There still this year, only the top three in the championship have taken victories. Uh, but it has been, yeah, an absolutely brilliant fight throughout the campaign there. P3 for us in the end. It was actually the first time that all three of us have finished on the podium uh, since Canada. So it's been quite a while, actually, uh, since Leclerc, Verstappen and I were all right at the top of the order. But yeah, as we return though here to Monza this weekend, I want to win this race more than any other. Get yourself subscribed if you're new. We're trying to hit 140,000 subscribers on the channel. And let's do this thing. Pedal to the metal sounds like your idea of fun. You've come to the right place. Welcome to practice here at the Temple of Speed. Welcome to Monza. Well, as we round the Alboreto curve, then we are going to get greeted by a sea of red here at Monza. Of course, it is only Friday practice, but this still feels incredibly special. Our first lap here as a Ferrari, Ferrari Formula One driver. And of course, I was quite lucky. I was able to go to this Grand Prix last year, um, you know, being right in it at the Turn 1. Pretty much in that grandstand right there, you can see on the left-hand side. It was an experience like no other. And I've been to Belgium, I've been to Imola, I've been to Austria and Silverstone as well. But nothing came close to when we saw Ferrari lock out the front row on Saturday afternoon. Or lead the way into the first corner on Sunday. We don't talk about the rest of that race. Uh, to be honest, obviously Max Verstappen ended up taking his record rating 10th win in a row uh, for okay, Red Bull. But yeah, this place this on your MFD. steeped in history. You know, it is up there with your Spas, your Silverstones and your Monacos as the greatest tracks in the motorsport world as well. And I absolutely love heading back to this venue every single season. It always provides a good race as well. And I think, yeah, we should hopefully lock down the purple score for our first free practice run and just making up then making sure that we wrap up all of our other R&D programs here. We need to try and get some good laps on the board. We need to head into qualifying with absolute confidence in the car. I feel like I'm ready, but boy, oh boy, the pressure is going to be on. Let's do this thing. It's qualifying day on the Temple of Speed. For over a century, the Temple of Speed has all come down to moments like this. Driver versus the stopwatch to set the grid for the Grand Prix. It is qualifying at Monza. Well, unless Max Verstappen can pull out something really special here, I think this weekend is going to be all about Ferrari. And when I tell you what, when you look back at some of the other recent qualifying sessions we've had around some of the ultra low downforce circuits, Silverstone and Spa, surely you've got to put your money on us here. We absolutely dominated both qualifying sessions, spurred on obviously at my home circuit, and then my favourite track on the F1 calendar. But Leclerc, he'll be hungry as well this weekend. He'll want to try and get a good result here in qualifying. We're both going to be aiming for probably mid to low 18s. That's ridiculous for a track that is 3.6 miles long. Well, I tell you what as well, Leclerc after the first run really struggling. Only down in P12. He did end up going fastest through Q1. So I would expect to see a big improvement by our teammate. Maybe just got held up by some slower cars on his lap. But as we make our way then out of the Alboreto curve here in Q2, surely we're going to immediately see Q3 in 18.59. We go top of the board ahead of Verstappen, Piastri, Albon and Gasly. Not the top five I would have predicted. Well, Leclerc waited right until the very last second, but he does squeeze by into Q2, uh, into Q3, sorry. And, well, I say squeeze by, he ends up fastest on the board there. Just four hundredths of a second in it between us at the end of the second session. Biggest shocks, though. Alex Albon through, Pierre Gasly through, 
They both appeared a couple of times in Q3 this year. Fred Vesti, though, makes it through ahead of his teammate Zhou Guan Yu there. So first ever Q3 appearance, I believe, for the Danish driver. He knocks out Alonso and Sergio Perez as well in Q2. But I'm not really interested in that. We want to start P1. Well, Leclerc making his way through the Alboreto curve. I believe he is just finishing off his first run as we are about to start ours. No, there we go. He dives back into the pit lane then. So let's see what kind of time we need to chase here on our first run. And obviously make sure, first of all, that we get a good, clean, tidy lap time on the board. 220 miles an hour before you slam on the anchors at about the 100-meter board, ready for turn one. But attack those curbs nice and tidy through the first couple of corners, get the power down on the exit, and then the rest of the lap is just about managing your battery usage, being really, really careful, trying to utilize it in the places that make the most sense, especially up in a gear there. That extra little bit of power really does make the difference. It's all a little bit unstable on the entry to the second chicane. We gather it up nicely, though. So we now got to try and attack the Lesmos. Fifth gear, absolutely hang on to it on the exit. And through the second part, again, you really want to flick it in. Oh, big mistake, though. Just run a little bit wide. We've got to try and finish the lap, but it's not going to be a good one. I mean, the amount of cars we are seeing down in the 118s right now is absolutely ridiculous there. Pierre Gasly ringing the neck out of that Haas car as well. But up towards the start finish line, it is going to be an 18-4 for us somehow. But Leclerc now, a 118-1. Alex Alban is provisionally P3. And is everybody else then wrapping up their last qualifying laps here? We are about to kickstart our own four tenths of a second required to get close to Charles Leclerc. I reckon if we absolutely nailed it though, we could see ourselves down into the 1 minute 17s. Get him into 8th gear, start using some of that battery down towards turn 1. Try and remember where the DRS detection point is this time round. But we're just going to try and conserve a little bit more energy for later on in the lap there. Breaking slightly too early down at turn 1. But it allows us to nicely sit over that inside curb. And we use the battery on the exit there just to give ourselves a little bit of a kick off the corner there. Get him into 8th. And we'll use just a little bit more. It doesn't look like any other times are improving. We are again purple though. Through the first sector there. Attack the curve through the second chicane. The car that time around. It sits planted around here. This car really does work over the curbs on this venue. Pole, pole position. Yep, don't need the reminder mark because we are chasing him. This should be where our lap though starts to just ramp up a little bit more there. Quarter of a second up now as we make our way down in towards Ascari. And luckily we have got a lot more battery to use as well. Breaking at the 100 meter will tip the car in through the apex and exit curbs. And you've got to be really, really careful there off the corner. We've lost a little bit of time though against our previous best. We're still going to be quarter of a second up, though, by the time we get down into that final corner. Chuck it in. Fifth gear through the apex. Get on the battery as early as you can on the exit. Is this going to be good enough for pole position? It is going to be so, so close between myself and Charles. I have no idea whether we've done it or not. No, we don't. We just, only just miss out. Three hundredths of a second when we got to the line there, and I think it's safe to say... We probably lost all of that through the Ascari chicane and maybe just a little bit more. Ferrari, a front row lockout. That's fantastic. I really, really wanted to try and get this pole though. So it's gutting once again there. You can just see Charles Leclerc when he's on his best. He's absolutely at his best there. Alex Albon though lines up P3. A miraculous job done uh, by the tie drivers. Though maybe his best ever qualifying session in Formula 1 ahead of Verstappen and both McLarens there. But Ferrari are going to be duking out for the win today. I don't think anybody else has really got a look in. Let's do this thing. Welcome to the venue of evocative corner names like Parabolica, which was renamed in 2021 to Curva Alboreto in honor of Italian motorsport legend Michele Alboreto. It's a fitting tribute to him here at Monza ahead of the Italian Grand Prix. This place is all about speed. It is a unique challenge. You've got the chicane at turn one, the Varianti Ascari at turns eight, nine, and 10, and the Parabolica to conclude things at 11. Top speeds pushing. 215 miles per hour. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole, and Firestarter completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Albon, Verstappen, 
Norris, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Stroll, Hamilton, Vesti, Joe, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Ricardo, Russell, Behrman, Sainz, Ocon, Sonoda, and Nico Hulkenberg rounds off the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Alongside me is Anthony Davidson. So they've got lots of team members to get to know, to win over, and to get working for them. How do you go about doing that? It's really great to see team and driver working so well together. But there's always improvements that you can get in. Well, this is the most advanced sport anywhere on the planet. How has it changed since you were last racing? The cars have got bigger, they're heavier. But critically, there's more downforce to play with as well now. There was about four tonnes of downforce on the car at 300 kilometres an hour when I drove. You're now looking more towards five tonnes of downforce. So there, you know, there's a, a big difference in performance. Uh, but you've, because of that, being the car being heavier and bigger, you've got to drive in a smoother way. You've got to look after it a bit more. You've got to nurse it through the slow speed corners more. They were much more nimble, agile machines when I drove in Formula 1 compared to now. Okay, as you know, this is the team's home race, which means it's extra important for everybody in this team. They've got friends here, they've got family here, they're all in the grandstands watching. So let's go and put on a good show for them. Well, very interesting there. Obviously, Anthony Davidson talking about when he used to race in Formula One. It was a great time. And yeah, you really could chuck those cars around. Hence why I'm doing an F1 2000 career on the channel as well. I think the next video goes live tomorrow uh, from Zandvoort, I believe, of all places. Uh, but yeah, today, though, it is all about the modern day. It is all about Ferrari here. 27 laps ahead of us, ready on the grid. And we have to go aggressive in terms of the tyre strategy here. Soft to medium. I want to try and get ahead of Leclerc early on. But ideally, more than anything else, we need to try and break away from the rest of the runners. This is going to be me versus him today. We don't want anybody else getting in the way that Alex Albon maybe could try and cause the upset of the century. It is five red lights on the grid though here at Monza and it is going to be lights out and away we go there and immediately we're going to get the better start than Charles Leclerc. Something I haven't said all too much in this series in recent times. We're trying to use a bit of battery down in towards Sir one there. Leclerc's going to try and fight me back but we're going to go very aggressive down through turn one and make it very clear to our teammate there that we are claiming the lead of the Grand Prix. Get a warning for a collision. I don't know whether that was by the FIA or just by the team there, but we had to make it stick into that first corner. No mucking about this weekend. No giving him any more room than I absolutely have to there. And yes, it might have been slightly risky. Yes, I'm sure most of the Ferrari personnel are incredibly nervous watching us head down into towards that first corner. But we've walked away one and two still. And yeah, we need to try and open up a bit of a lead as early as we can there. Already, you can see Albon dropping back and dragging Verstappen with him there. As Leclerc still trying to apply pressure to myself. I guess as well, the other thing we've got to do is very early on today, we've got to see how quick this car actually is in a straight line as well. Just because I'm genuinely quite interested to know. Leclerc though, already trying to apply the pressure as we start lap two. You can use DRS when you're within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. So much about it is going to be the battery uses this afternoon, but Leclerc back down the inside then. So, again, you know, we'll we'll get the elbows out, I'm sure, with each other. But the big thing is that we don't take each other out. Otherwise, that could be disastrous. Well, I think, yeah, this race is probably going to end up being quite a lot like Belgium. This car is just so much better than anything else in a straight line on this game at the moment. It has worked to our favour a lot of times in more recent weekends. As we try and get a run then on Leclerc. Open up that DRS. 220 miles an hour. 227 miles an hour. Back down towards Sermon. one. Leclerc though is going to try and hang it along our inside. We'll get a little bit wedged over the curb there. Make sure we give him some room on the exit. Again, this is okay as long as we don't start dropping back into the clutches of the cars behind there. But side by side we go through Curva Grande here. I mean, this is just pure Ferrari poetry. Both drivers trying to fight for the world title still. Leclerc with a huge advantage though. But again, into the chicane. Just a bit later on the brakes. We'll give him no place to go. I am sensing just a little bit of nervousness in the way Leclerc is driving right now. As Alex Alba knew fastest lap of the day. So annoyingly he has got back in the fight at the front. And look at the straight line speed of that Williams. Back down towards Sermon 1. 
Like I said, I did not expect him to be battling with the tie driver today, but I guess that's the joys of Monza inside this game. But yeah, Leclerc, though, just seems a little bit desperate early to make sure he's still got the lead of the race. I'm, you know, I want to be there, but I, I'm not desperate to get it done instantly. Well, to be fair, we almost saw it last weekend through the pit stop window. Oli Behrman nearly got the lead of the Dutch Grand Prix, but here, on raw pace, we might be about to see Williams, I believe, for the first time ever, take the lead of a Grand Prix inside F124. We're trying to use our battery again back down towards someone. There goes 231 miles an hour, and I reckon the car's got a tiny bit more in it. But Alex Albon, around the outside of Leclerc, is going to go down at Turn 1, and Williams... Like I said, I don't know when the last time they led a Grand Prix. First place. Okay, mate. Get it okay. screenshot. Ahead. Right, here we go. Let's look to get past quickly and put them on the back foot. I mean, Alex Albon, this could be his day of days, but I want to win more than anything else here is now a little bit of a mistake. Oscar, uh, sorry, Lando Norris even. Just thought about having a sniff. Right, here we go. Leclerc again then. I mean, this is shaping up like early laps of Zandvoort right now. Just overtakes being made. Lap after lap after lap. Again, we're trying to close in on him. Again, we're going to be at nearly 230 miles an hour as Leclerc really trying to get the elbows out with Albon. Again, just goes to show to me that I think he's a little bit nervous today. But yeah, Williams, they've led their lap. Now it's time for Ferrari to be back in front. I'm starting to get a little bit worried that just like Hungary, we're overheating those rear tyres and it is really costing us quite early on in the afternoon. I really want to try and still go to mediums for the second stint there. And I think they should be able to go quite a long way in this Grand Prix. But I think we'll need to get these tyres to the end of lap 10. But yeah, the team did warn me that these wouldn't hang on very well. I wasn't expecting them to be this bad. It's mainly up on the Lismos then that I'm losing the time to Leclerc in front. But what's weird, I'm still pulling away from the cars behind. Tyre warning light now just starting to flash up. So we have got to be careful. So I want to try and get these one more lap. We can go to the end of 10. And I believe we've got a chance to go to the end of the afternoon. Other thing I'm gutted about, kick sauber. Brilliant pace in qualifying. I thought we might see them score some points for the first time in who knows how long. And they've immediately dropped to the back of the field still. And as we make our way then down in towards the final couple of turns, this pit stop is going to be critical. We need to get a good one under our belt here. And we need to get the good out lap as well if we want to try and get the undercut on our teammate Sarah Leclerc. Really got to break aggressively into the pit lane entry. That was pretty much as late as I think I'd want to leave it there. As we make our way down the pit lane, and see the team out there in the red overalls. Where are we going to re-emerge, actually? I'm hoping not in too much traffic. Hey, mate, that's it. Go, go, go. That was a fantastic stop. Faster than we were expecting. Not the worst stop I've ever had on this game, but certainly not the best either. As Ollie Behrman now moves himself up into ninth place as well, so he's having a good day out of it. See these tyres through to the end now. Merck appear to be struggling here about as much as they do inside F1 Manager, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, we're back down then in P17. Annoyingly, we have come out in a bit of traffic, but hopefully it's not going to cost us too much. Is Gasly up to P2 for Haas? Let's not forget, we didn't win this race for Haas as well, so it's it's been a good track for them. Oh, what on earth is going on here? Russell makes the move around the outside of Hulkenberg and everybody else. He's just forced to check up behind. Hopefully now we can try and get a run on Esteban there. But you can see the AI I like to use their overtake. It's a very odd spot. And the outside will go of the Alpine driver there, who kind of half decided to back out of it. My old team at Hulkenberg as well will kind of move away on the exit of the corner. As an outlap goes, that could have been worse, but it could have also been better. So here we go. George Russell up next. 227 miles an hour. Back down towards Sir Wallace. We'll try and make sure we hit our marks. Beautiful. Three cars overtaken in about four corners. I mean, what is going on there? They're three wide on the exit of turn one. I mean, just welcome to Monza. Oh, don't say you're going to do it again. We just watched Hulkenberg and George Russell do this a lap ago. Now we've got Ricardo and Fred Vesti doing the same. As Leclerc then into the pit lane. I think we might have gained a little bit on him here, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. It's trying to get the run on Sir Lance. I mean, what is this? Again, they're going to try and go three wide. Vesti to the outside of Ricardo. We almost go into the back of the Canadian there, so we'll try and get a run off of that final corner. Oh, I thought, I just worried then that Stroll was going to try and pit. 
Is where are we going to come out relative to Charles Leclerc? There he is. So we've got the undercut on our teammate there is our Ricardo. I thought about trying to look down the inside. Thought better of it. Luckily he was able to back out. As we try and put the power down. Fred Vesti, please see me there. We'll make a pass on the grass on the exit of turn two. We may be able to make it three overtakes as well. There is Ricardo. We'll try and half-hearted defend. But we are up into P7. The problem we've got, of course, is uh, Leclerc, though, in the second half of this race. He's going to be quick, especially towards the end. But effectively, the tables have turned from the last race at Zanvor. Oh, no. No, not again. Gearbox is gone. It's gone. We can't do anything. Both Italian Grand Prix wasted. Wasted this year. I am so done with Ferrari. I've said before I didn't want to believe conspiracy. That, though, is... That that just... The, the laws of mathematics, I refuse to believe, allows that to happen. Surely there is something going on with this car. We've already lost it, Mark. Shut up. I'm done. I'm going home. Drive. What a driver! Charles Leclerc takes the victory! A great team victory today. That's the important bit here. On home soil, the drivers delivered, the team delivered as well. And to do that in front of their home support really means a lot to them. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc then takes the victory here at the Temple of Speed, but two gearbox failures at both Italian Grand Prix from, well, it was the lead at Imola, it was the net lead here. I didn't want to believe in conspiracy, but surely the team is screw me here. That's our fourth mechanical failure of the year. Leclerc, he's had zero. I don't know why they're getting such bad treatment in the team, but I tell you what, I'm happy to say it now. If, an on, if a contract offer comes through from a Red Bull, from a Mercedes, from a McLaren, I'm so tempted to jump ship come the end of the year. I'm so fed up with this team letting us down right now. Lando Norris comes through for P2, head of Verstappen and Alex Albon there. Hamilton, a decent recovery to be out. Stroll, Piastri, Gasly and Sergio Perez there. Behrman once again will just narrowly miss out on scoring some points, but it was myself and our old teammate Nico Hülkenberg who failed to see the checkered flag. That means in terms of the championship, uh, Leclerc now has 133 points over me. Uh, it's not quite mathematically over yet, but we're, we're fast approaching it. Uh, as we head through the second half of the year there. Verstappen, uh, 68 points back behind our teammate, 65 clear of myself. I don't even believe we can beat him now, to be honest with you. We are just facing so much bad luck inside this series at the moment there. Norris is still ahead of Russell and Alonso there with Piastri, Hamilton, Perez and Alex Albon inside the top 10. Albon, yeah, huge points for him and Williams there. This has easily been their most successful campaign of this game so far. Uh, Constructors-wise, the gap now up over 200 points would be cause for celebration, but I don't feel like celebrating tonight. I'll be honest with you guys, and I'm happy that we're back to the F1 2000 career tomorrow uh, because, yeah, I certainly don't want to drive this car for another couple of days. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. Like I did back at Imola. I'm just going to put like the thumbnail for the video. Uh, to avoid spoilers for other people as well. That haven't clicked on it yet. Um, but yeah, we'll be back very soon. Ready. I believe we're back in Baku. But who really cares?